Hey folks, and welcome to this special series, The Enneagram and Wings. We're certainly glad that you're here. My name is Anthony Skinner. I'm the producer of the show. Before we go any further, I want to welcome my good friend and host of the show, Ian Cron. Ian, welcome to the show. Thank you, Anthony. I'm glad to be here. I like that little turn. Wonderful day. Yeah, what did you do today? Uh, I went down to Grimey's. Grimey's, I love Grimey's, yes. Right? Oh, right. so it, cool. So cool. So for those of you who don't live in Nashville, Grimey's is uh, a place where you can buy new and pre-loved music and books. <laughs> and, you know, I'm old enough, obviously, to remember going to record stores buying vinyl, right? And so, oh, you, so flip, cool. you go through all the bins and you'd flip and look and read the cover stuff. So anyway, Grimey's is where everyone in Nashville goes to get their vinyl records, right? Uh, and um, which is a wonderful segue into what we've been doing at the front end of every show, which yes. is celebrating the fact that you no longer just have a gray wall behind you, but you actually have a picture with some color, orange, <laughs> and your turntable and you have been sharing an album a vinyl album of the week every week that's right what is it this week brother it is boom oh my gosh fleetwood mac rumors oh my gosh i don't know that it gets better it might get the oh. same but i don't know that it gets oh. better than this right here so great listen from start to finish check this one out on vinyl um does not disappoint so yeah, and if you live in Nashville, get to Grimey's. That's right. Great live shows in that little shop, too. So, yep. uh, so as you know, on the Typology Podcast, we receive a lot of questions from our listeners about wings, uh, Enneagram wings. And um, sometimes we touch on it here and there in an episode, but we don't really get to do a deep dive, and that's what we're doing here. So let's talk about wings a little bit. Yeah, so, you know, often people think wings offer like just only an added layer of clarity about their core type, which is true, mm -hmm. but there's so much more to wings than that, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Um, and I really want to explore that with, with people. Yeah. So let's start with some basics. Tell us what wings are, and then we'll, we'll do a little deeper dive into stuff that uh, people may not know. Okay. So the term wing or wings refers to the types on either side of your core type. So if you're a type six, we're gonna be talking about sixes today, mm -hmm. uh, you could either have a five wing or a seven wing. Now, typically one of those two wings influences your core type, right, more than the other. Mm -hmm. And they're called, we call that your dominant wing. Okay. Okay, your dominant wing. So to be clear, you when you have like a six, you can't have like a four and a one, right? Like let's talk no. about that. You know how you hear people say, uh, "Yeah, I think I have a seven, and I got a one wing and a oh. three wing." It happens to me at every conference I lead, every workshop. <laughs> someone will come up to me, some sweet person, you know, at the first break, and I will have already taught wings. Yeah, and they'll go. I think I'm a six with a four and a one, and I'll be like, "You have multiple personality disorder," <laughs> and you know, that's the scramble gram, not the enneagram. You know, it's like you're in the wrong conference. But yeah, it can only be one of the two numbers adjacent to your type. That's great. Yes. Okay. So, what exactly does a wing do? Well, I mean, uh, think of a wing like salt and pepper. Like it, it your, your dominant wing seasons, it flavors. Uh, it gives its juice mm. to your core type with by, by lending it some of its characteristic features and traits, right? Mm -hmm. um, and we'll talk about that, you know, as we talk about the two variations on, on sixes. But, but what we're just getting from it is some of its gifts, its resources, mm. opportunities. Um, we get some of its strengths. We get some of its weaknesses. Okay, so you're kind of touching on this a little bit. Why, why is it important then to know what your wing is? Because wings reveal a whole different side of your personality and they can explain contradictory elements within your personality, mm. okay? Yeah. So um, we were uh, talking uh, earlier about, you know, being a four with a three wing. Mm -hmm. And a four being so hung up on authenticity right. and a three 
being willing to swap out masks, right? And right. be inauthentic when they're not healthy. Yeah. And, and, and to have both of those inside of the same person, you're like, I just, you feel all bound up and twisted, like, you know, I'm this. And it, I just think one of the gifts of the Enneagram is, is, it, is, it, is it helps you understand all of us, every mm. type, every combination of core type and wing brings to the surface the fact that we're all contradictions. I love it. I love that. Yeah. So helpful. So does everyone's dominant wing have equal influence on their main type? No, that's a great question. So wings have gradations, okay? Mm -hmm. So your core type is always going to dominate. But if your wing is so strong that it starts to compete almost with your core type, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, it's just so heavy. We call that a, literally a heavy wing, mm -hmm. right? And a heavy wing can make it difficult for people to discern your type because your core number is so affected by this heavy wing that it's kind of hard to know which one am I? Mm. Do, you, do you know what I mean? Like yeah. that was the case with me. I, I have a very heavy three wing. So it's like, I can remember forever going back and forth, back and forth until I really knew I, I identified with the unconscious motivation of, of the four. And I knew for sure that that's what mm. I was. So. That heavy wing is uh, um, can be tricky, and and this is why, by the way, we should do one episode sometime on the typing process, how mm -hmm. to do a typing interview, because if I see someone come to me and they say, "Oh, I can't tell if I'm a seven or an eight. part one of the things I think of is they may have a heavy wing, right, and they're identifying with the wing, or maybe they've got the right type, or the, and then it, that really helps me in the typing process with somebody. Yeah, that's good. So uh, let's take a look at what it looks like uh, for how the wings influence the six, the Enneagram six. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Oh, man. Type sixes. As you know, mm -hmm. I, I love sixes. Love sixes. Um, so if you, if you identify as the loyalist or a six, you, you would be either a six with a five wing or a six with a seven wing, mm -hmm. right? Now, if you are a six with a five wing, you're, you're going to be more introverted, intellectual, curious, self-controlled, maybe apt to seek security through allegiances with mm. authority figures. Mm -hmm. um, you might gravitate toward a defined belief system mm. and a group that shares your values. Y you know what I'm saying? Like, like. Sixes are all about forging alliances in order to find security and safety, mm -hmm. right? Um, sometimes a, a five, I mean, a six wing five gets misread as distant or aloof. Okay. Um, they just simply like to protect their privacy, actually. And they, they like solitary activities and, and pursue hobbies that might be done solo you know what i mean mm. so do you see how it's picking up some of the five attributes right yes the, the unconscious motivation of the six they're still sixes yeah but they're picking up some of these traits of the five and 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 it and remember too the traits may be they're not going to be as strong necessarily as they are in the five it's just right. going to be like a color a juice mm -hmm. a tint mm -hmm. just a tint of it okay um so the 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 six with five they have a need for more time alone, which helps them get, you know, or gain a better perspective uh, on the things that contribute to their anxiety. Mm -hmm. uh, but because they overanalyze things for too long, they can, without taking action, mm -hmm. these, these particular sixes are prone to analysis paralysis. Okay. Let's talk about sixes with the seven wing. Yeah, these, are, these are cool people too. Mm -hmm. um, so a six with a seven wing has all the playfulness of that seven, mm -hmm. right? So they're entertaining, they're animated, they're adventuresome, they're willing to risk even if just a little. So now they're not going to risk the way a pure seven is, mm. right? Right. But they're but they're going to just pick up a little bit more of the, that adventurous side, mm, right? That's good. Yeah. So the so the boundaries of the six are stretched to accommodate more options, right? Mm -hmm. 
but they don't completely separate from their anxiety. So there's always a backup plan in mm. case an adventure becomes a misadventure. Oh, you wow. know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and they're far more extroverted and, and willing to sacrifice themselves for loved ones than sixes with five wings. I think our friend Katie is a six with a seven. Yeah, that's what and I was thinking as a, you were going through that. Yep. Yeah. D- don't you think that describes her perfectly? Uh, totally. Yeah. Yeah, totally does. <laughs> I love that. Okay, so uh, before we finish, let's talk a little bit about uh, the difference between how some people might view wings as static, but uh, actually, I think you you look at them as opportunities for growth. Yeah. So this is so important. Most people think, okay, I'm a four with a three wing. Yeah. Static. Done. All the three wing does is give me added clarity about my my foreness with all of its contradictions, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. Not true. Um, there are growth opportunities. So um, right now, for example, I'm a four. I am leaning into my heavy three wing. Right. And I am getting its juice to do this show. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. nobody wants to see me like talking about poetry. <laughs> and they, you know, they want to see somebody do this. You sure. know what I'm saying? They, they, they want somebody who's a little bit more image conscious because right. it's more entertaining, you know. Yeah. So, but that doesn't mean that my five wing is dead and doesn't have any influence in my life. Right. What I love about it is when I'm writing a book, I can intentionally and consciously say to myself, I have to lean into five. Mm-hmm. I have to tap into the resources of my five side. There's a five side to me. Yes. It's just not as strong as my three side. Right. Right. It doesn't mean, though, that it's useless or doesn't play a role in my life. It's got all kinds of gifts that I can tap into. And it's particularly um, helpful if you do it consciously and intentionally. Mm, Love that. All right. Well, thanks again, Ian, for... uh this uh, special series and this episode on the Enneagram and Wings featuring the six. Stick around for the next and last episode, the Enneagram and Wings featuring the seven. Until then, see you later. See you later.